Good afternoon, it's Randy. Well, Scott made another excellent video that I watched this morning and I'm just now getting to actually comment on it. I wanted to try to repeat some of the things that he said and try to say it in a little bit different way because what he said was um, very complicated and it was very important. It was about narcissist emotional dysfunction. So what I believe Scott was saying in Understanding Narcissist uh, channel was that uh, narcissists have and suffer from emotional dysregulation and problems processing their emotions. This also can look like a thought disorder because distorted and disorganized and irrational thoughts lead to um, irrational emotions and behaviors. So it's kind of like what caused what? What came first? Was it the thought that caused the emotion or the emotion that caused the thought? Um, it's the thought that caused the emotion, but their thoughts are distorted and they don't express them. So we never do really truly know their thoughts. So we can't make that jump to try to understand why they reacted so harshly or so strongly or so out of context and so emotionally to a, what seems to be a trigger, but it's so uh, exaggerated compared to how a normal person would react to uh, maybe the same kind of trigger or comment um, or stimuli. To try to give an example, I guess, um, real life examples, I had always thought that the narcissist husband in my life, um, partner, that he had an anger management problem. Um, that was clear, that he had an anger management problem. And anger management, there are anger management classes. Usually, the only ones I know of are uh, court-ordered and uh, as a result of usually a male offender having um, been charged with domestic violence. Um, I don't know of any groups where people voluntarily go to an anger management class, but perhaps there are. The only ones I know of are court ordered and I always thought, gosh, I wish he would go to anger management class because whatever I've been trying to help him with in terms of anger management definitely is not working. In fact, I'm triggering him all over the place. And so there comes the walking on eggshells in response because the narcissist seems so sensitive and overreactive to certain things. And then you spend enough time with them and you start learning what those kinds of things are that upset the narcissist. And then you just don't do them because you don't want to experience that rage and you don't want to be punished course you also have your own thoughts and feelings as a separate person from them and you realize over time that every time you express a thought or a feeling that isn't consistent with how the narcissist feels or wants you to feel or expects you to feel or is too much about you and not enough about them that they also punish you for that so you push down your own feelings and deny them and suppress them in response to how easily the narcissist is triggered. I mean, it's like working in an insane asylum. That's an old term. But 
It's like working with a crazy person and constantly being worried about what you might say or do that could trigger the identified patient. And you know that if you say the wrong thing, you might have to call a code and bring in the guys with the white coats because this person's going to go off. So you learn the longer you're with these people how you have to behave in order to keep them on an even keel. And you know that they are always on the brink of losing control based on outer stimuli. And the more they isolate themselves and you, and you isolate yourself away from that outer stimuli, Sometimes the two of you can get along, but over time, you're going to be the catalyst that causes all of the triggering that goes on, that sets off the narcissist to explode. So, in a way, you feel like everything depends on you. All Everything's on your shoulders as the target. You have to make sure that everything is in place. You have to make sure and then metaphorically kind of cleaning you have to make sure everything's in its own physical place the 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 noise level is at an appropriate uh, you know noise level in the room um that nobody's um upset uh that only certain programs are come onto the tv obviously you try to control things in your environment to keep the narcissist steady because you start like getting worried. It's like, you know, the shell game. Oh my God, you're, you know, what do I got to do next to make sure things are going good? So that is the sickness, I think, that Scott is talking about. That we never get to verbalize and sort things out with the narcissist because there is no logic. Nothing's ever rationally resolved with them. This is how targets end up over explaining ourselves and always trying to reason with the narc in a pleading way uh, so that they don't go off. And to sum it up, I think what Scott was saying is is that one of the things he was saying because he said a lot that by letting the narcissist extinguish the existence of our own genuine expression of feeling makes us sick and it makes us just as sick as them the longer we're with them so to the the extent to which we suppress our feelings is also the extent to which we will suffer later on when we get rid of the narcissist because suppressing and denying true feelings is not healthy. And it's this you're always working in the opposite direction of the narcissist, whereas the narcissist is always trying to avoid feelings and avoid any heart-to-heart -heart talks, any resolutions at any cost. And the target's always trying to talk things out, to work things out, to reason, to logic, to express and those are they're working at two opposite polar opposite spectrums of the scale and the narcissist wanting to avoid anything painful at any cost is uh is never going to work it's not going to work for a relationship, but it's certainly not going to work to promote the health of the narcissist because they are denying and suppressing everything, and they've been doing it 
for so long and they almost do it, I think, consciously because they will physically turn away, run, bolt. They do not want to discuss serious matters in a mature way and they will not discuss it with any feelings attached to it unless those feelings are anger because they're very familiar with anger that's the one of the only emotions that they feel comfortable expressing they also like to express splash express pre pleasure and amusement i would say um but everything else is negative that they that they are comfortable expressing and mainly their amusement is when they're making fun of someone else or putting someone else down or laughing at someone else at their expense so this is not the kind of person that anybody who's into self-development or into self-expression or into um, uh, self-actualization, spirituality. It's no one to be around. The narcissist is working in the opposite direction. And their goal is to avoid anything painful, no matter what. Even if they could see the light right across, you know, that hurdle and see that if they would just move toward a little bit of the pain, that they would end up on the other side where everything's bright and feel better. This is how targets know things work, that some you have to go through things. You can't just always go around things. In fact, you can never go around the truth. You have to face it. This is something the narcissist will not do. And while you play that game and play into their denial and their refusal to face the truth, you get sicker. And as Scott reminded us all, narcissists also get sicker and sicker. They never get better. They always get worse. Thanks for listening.